In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to insulate a water line that can't be very deep enough to protect it from freezing. So here we have a situation here. There's a little bit of a trench. There's not a whole lot more soil here before we get to bedrock. So it's kind of a classic cottage country situation. We're going to be using a cable to heat that water line. There's a cable here. And um, the interesting thing about it is we're going to be taping it to the outside of the water line, and then we're going to be encasing the whole thing in an insulating sleeve, and then putting this PVC pipe over everything to protect the insulation mechanically and also to stop it from getting waterlogged. And this cable is also going to be controlled by a thermostat, so it will only come on when it needs to, when things get cold enough to kind of get near freezing. In addition to that, this cable is, is kind of unique in that it has the ability to put out different amounts of heat depending on the temperature at that spot. So, so theoretically, if this area of the cable were a little bit deeper, say, and it didn't get as cold as the higher stuff, um, this area, which is closer to the surface and, and gets cold more easily, would put out more heat in this zone rather than this zone. So it's pretty smart cable as it goes. Now the cable can't completely shut itself off though. So in the summertime, when there's no danger of freezing, it would still be using some electricity. So that's why we're gonna couple the installation with a thermostat that has a probe that goes right next to the pipe and controls the flow of current to the system. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually start applying this cable to the outside of this inch and a quarter water line. And we're going to do that with some aluminum tape, as you'll see right now. Here we are inside the building where this water line is going to go. An inch and a quarter pipe is coming up through. There's lots of extra here for making the connections to the internal water system. And this is the end of that heating cable I was telling you about. We've, we've applied it to the outside of the pipe with some pretty thick, heavy-duty aluminum tape. Um, it forms over it holds the cable tight to the pipe along its whole length, and it also helps to conduct heat over the pipe as well. So we're just gonna continue this operation all the way along, and then we're gonna to switch to the foam. So we've got the pipe insulation on here and it's going right up into the building where it's going to be heated. This will all be encased in, in protective pipe later on, but I wanted you to see how this works and how the, how the foam insulation goes on, on top of the pipe. There's this uh, self-adhesive strips that you pull off and it seals together. And it's going to be encased, too, in some pipe, as I said, to protect it, keep it from getting chewed on by mice and, and deteriorating. So that's the, uh, the insulation step right there. So just to ensure that the foam stays together one piece to the other, this black tape that kind of encases that. And if you have, see along here we've got a bend and that can tend to make the seams open up a bit. Not that it matters a lot long term because we're going to be putting the PVC over top of everything, but probably not a good idea or it probably is a good idea to just make sure this stays shut so it's been a few days now and we've got some snow but at this stage we're putting pvc pipe on top over the insulated water pipe that protects the insulation in the water pipe and it also stops the foam from getting waterlogged over time so we just put some some pvc cement on the joint and then put the pieces together and we're good to go here we are in the building where the water flow starts from. 
Uh, this is the water pump here. This pipe is the one you saw earlier. It's the one we covered in foam and PVC plastic. It's come into the building now. And this is the cable that we taped to the outside. Once you get inside the building, the cable doesn't need to be fastened to the pipe. It doesn't need to heat the pipe anymore because now we're in a space that will be heated eventually. So we're coming to the end of the installation and the heating cable plugs into this thermostat here. The thermostat has a temperature probe on the end. This probe and the cable you see here follows the water pipe out and it actually gets installed inside the PVC within the insulation that's surrounding the pipe. And that feeds information back to the thermostat, telling it to turn on or off accordingly. So the system works, it's really quite simple. Just, uh, just plugs in here like this. And then the thermostat will turn the cable on when heat is necessary and shut it off again when heat is not necessary. Now that function, coupled with the fact that this cable is pretty smart, means that the system does not use very much electricity at all. This cable is smart enough that it can apply more or less heat along its length, depending on the temperature right there at the cable. So it's self-regulating in a certain way, but coupled with the thermostat, uh, it really uses the bare minimum of electricity. You might not even really notice it on your hydro bill. So some time has passed and we've got the water line actually installed here. And I just want to show you one little trick. It's very useful for bringing a water line up into a building that's raised off the ground. This is a toilet flange. So normally this would be connected to drain pipes and the toilet would bolt to it. But it makes a perfect situation, perfect setup uh, for neatly having that pipe come in. Uh, it fastens in this case to this little raised box. It can also fasten directly to the floor if you want to do that. And it just gives you a nice neat place for the pipe to come up. And here you can, you can see that smart heating cable. 